what's up guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Ayomide if you're new here you are absolutely welcome on this channel I post DIY sewing tutorials and pattern drafting tutorials just in case you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button below in this video I'm going to be showing you all how I made this amazing beautiful and camera blouse that could also pass for a jacket it is an open-ended jacket in the front or blouse however you want to call it can you see it is open-ended and it has a lace trim detail in the front all around the neckline and also peplum that is splitted around the waist area with a belt detail too if you want to learn how i made this blouse then you would have to stick to this video till the very end once again my name is Ayomide and on this channel i post diy sewing tutorials now without talking too much let us jump straight into the tutorial so guys to get started we are going to be needing the following tools i've got my basic bodice pattern this is just a basic bodice pattern mm -mm -mm. So guys, to get started, these are the tools that you're going to need. First of all, I have my basic bodice pattern here. So if you don't know how to draft one, I have a detailed tutorial on my channel. I explain some details how to draft your basic bodice pattern. Now the neck width of this pattern is 2.5 inch. I use 2.5 inch for the neck width. I added half an inch seam allowance to the shoulder slant. And the neck depth is half an inch this pattern i'm going to be using it to cut both the front and the back i'm going to be showing us how to do that later on that is why i marked half an inch here for the neck depth this neck depth is going to be for the back also i did an overlap i just measured about i think three inches or so more like almost 3.5 inch overlap in the front because there's going to be a little overlap in the front so i have my pattern paper i have my main fabric i think i've done so many things with this fabric if you've been following my post been following my work you know that i've done so many things i've made a bomber jacket with this fabric i've made an ankara peplum blouse with this fabric the tutorials are on the channel even though i did not use this fabric for the bomber jackets and the Ankara blouse but if you check my community tab post you're going to see the amazing work I've done with this beautiful fabric so this is another bundle we're about to create something super amazing I have my Ankara fabric I have my lining I have my paper scissors fabric scissors my paints tailors chalk I have this lace trim here that's going to be placed along the neckline. I got one and a half yard. I know I won't exhaust everything, but I like it to be surplus than for it not to be sufficient. Then I have this very sturdy interfacing, quite sturdy. It's going to be used for the peplum. So these are the materials that we're going to be working with. Now we are going to move on to cutting our fabric. Cut on the fabric, I'm going to be starting with the back pattern because I'm going to be modifying this pattern later on for the front. I've gone ahead to place my fabric on fold. A quick tip here, if you're working with a fabric that has a particular pattern, you would want to fold your fabric in such a way that your patterns are well represented. So although I've placed my pattern on my fabric already, but it's, I know that my patterns are properly placed. So this is just a quick tip. You don't just randomly fold your fabric. That's a way of adding beauty to your work. I place my pattern on the fold. There's not going to be any zipper because it is an open-ended jacket in the front, more like a, a jacket rather, or a camera blouse, whatever you want to call it. On my pattern, I have added all the necessary seam allowances. Let me just go over. And you check I've added all the necessary seam allowances and then I'm going to be cutting I'm done cutting this is what I have here if I open it up you can see that this pattern is well represented I love the way it's, it just appears right at the center back so I'll just go over and fold it 
then along the center back i'm going to be marking one inch upward or 0 0.75 inch upward i'll connect it to the side and i'm going to be trimming it out Moving over to the front, I will just open up the little overlap that I folded inward. It's nothing serious. You can just fold in two inches, three inches, depending. I don't want to draft my pattern on fold so as not to waste the paper because I really don't need much. Along the waistline here, I'm going to be marking one inch inward because it's not going to be a serious overlap like that. One inch inward is okay. Then I'm going to be connecting this to my neck point. Afterwards, I'll go ahead and trim up this side. So this is what I'm going to be using to cut out my front. I have equally folded my fabric into two and placed my pattern on it so I can go ahead and cut. cutting i added like half an inch here to the waist so that i can easily turn it with my fabric with my lining rather and not be short of this overlap i want to maintain this one inch overlap but i did not add anything here to the shoulder because i already used 2.5 inch for the neck width which is still very much okay now moving over to the peplum to move on with the peplum the peplum is going to be quite large because of the pleats and so to the waist measurements i'm adding an extra 50 inches i know that sounds quite much but i'm adding an extra 50 inches this is because i'm going to be pleating it in and like i always say it is better to have an excessive fabric than for the fabric not to be enough be enough rather so dividing the total amount by 6.28 i had a total of 80 inches 80 divided by 6.28 gave me 12.7 so my radius is going to be 12.7 and the length of the peplum is going to be 8.5 inches and that brings you to a total of 21.2 i could just do 21.5 so i've gone ahead to fold my fabric into four one two three and four and this is the edge whereby i'm going to be marking the radius from the radius is 12.7 You can cut this two times if you cannot afford to cut it once. I can do this once because I have enough insufficient fabric. So, and I don't want to join fabric. On the radius, I'll go ahead and mark my length of 21.5. I'm true I can cut this out I'm going to be splitting just one end open so before I open this up I would also use it to cut my lining and likewise cut my lining with the main fabric so that's for the upper bodice I'm going to be cutting it on the lining too so out of three yards of fabric because I split the initial fabric into two, it was six yards. Excuse me, I split it into two, three yards, three yards. This is what I have left, and it is still enough for me to cut out the sleeve. It's going to be a basic sleeve. We are done cutting. Now, this is what you should have when you're done your back pattern and your lining front pattern and also the lining your sleeve it's, it is a basic sleeve i have a detailed tutorial on this you can also check it out i still have my lace string here then we have our peplum which is very wide it's quite wide this is the interfacing this is the lining you can see my camera cannot even capture the entire peplum this is super super wide but we are going to pleat this in so this is also the fabric peplum 
this is a fabric this is it on fold imagine how wide it's going to be when i open it up entirely now the next thing would be so i'm going to be ironing this interfacing on the lining and not the main fabric because when you iron it on your main fabric sometimes it causes your fabric to wrinkle okay so just iron it on your lining you can use a softer mild interfacing on the fabric but i'm not going to be doing that you can use high stay if you want i'm not going to be doing that once i'm done with this what i'll do next is i'm going to be sewing in my darts so i have my darts allowance i'm sewing my darts for the front and also sewing my darts for the back and also join them together along the shoulder slant so that is what i'll go ahead and do so guys um done joining i've picked my dart this is the front and this is the back i joined it along the shoulder slant i also did the same thing for the back too or rather for the lining here is my lining this is the shoulder i picked my dart and i repeated the same thing for the other side of my lining too so before i move on with how to fix the lace strings let me show you guys the peplum i've gone ahead to prep the peplum it is very very heavy Re remember i said i was going to be ironing interfacing on the lining so i iron the interfacing on the lining then place right sides of lining and fabric taking this part as the wrong side i place them against each other and then I sew it down along the edge before turning it. I gave it a very good press after which, after which I stitched it along the waist area so that the lining and the fabric can become a single piece. I found out that doing it this way makes it easier, especially if you want to pleat. So you can decide to go ahead and sew it along the waist. I did it all the way down. So my lining and my main fabric are now one single piece okay so make sure you give your clothes a very good press that is the secret to this make sure you iron it very well i'm also going to be securing the rough edge with a bias tape you can decide to turn it before closing it up along the waist or you can finish it off with a bias tape just just make sure you give it a really nice finish move on with joining the lace trim here is my lace trim i got one and a half yard i will not finish it now if you look at this trim i hope you can see it properly i got a trim that would be very easy for me to sew so if you look at this trim you can see that i can easily sew along this part and then this particular uneven part would act as a, a form of decoration along the tree so i'm going to be pinning this part along the neckline so this is the right side of my fabric i'll pin i'll just leave like half an inch away then i'll pin it down so guys i'm done pinning it all around i took it from one end of the front to the other side now at this point you can go ahead and sew it down or you can sandwich your lace trim in between your fabric and your lining if you think you can handle it so if you want to sandwich your lace trim in between the fabric and lining all you have to do is to place right sides of your lining this way make sure all the crucial points match and what do i mean by crucial points make sure your shoulder slants they match at both sides that is very very important so make sure they match at both sides and then you can pin them together in place but if you think you cannot undo it you can sew your lace trim first of all then come back and then sew your lining i think that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to sew my lace trim first then once i'm done i will now sew my lining done sewing can you see 
I'm true sewing it so I'm going to trim off the excess afterwards I can now place my lining so I'm going to be placing I'm going to be flipping this trim this way okay so I flipped it then I'm going to be placing my lining this way making sure they match properly my dots are matching up properly then I'll pin and then I'm going to be sewing it all the way down I'm done sewing so when I flip my lining to the other side this is what I would have this is it on the inside this is it on the outside sometimes when you're sewing your lining especially in this case whereby i wanted my shoulder point to match up so after pinning you might realize that maybe in the process of cutting or when you're sewing and your sewing machine applies pressure on your machine if you notice you know that the clothes tend to stretch a little bit all you can do is to just split just create tiny pleats because if your shoulder points don't match up it will not easily turn so you see that i made tiny pleats here just to cover up for that excess fabric and it will not affect what you're doing so what i'll do next is i'm going to be giving this a good press after which i will join it along the sides so i did not add enough seam allowance that would enable me join that would enable me to turn the fabric with lining so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and join it together like this and then i will secure it with a bias so i am done joining you can see this is the shoulder this is the side i also fixed the belt it is just a long strap of fabric about 45 inches long and see it on the inside so you can see the way i joined it on the inside i would finish all these raw edges with a bias tape you can also overlock the raw edges okay i also did the same thing on the other side although on the other side i have started pinning my peplum in place because before you sew the peplum you will need to pin it in place first it makes it easier to sew so on the inside you would see that i have pinned a reasonable amount in place and then once i'm done i'll go ahead and sew it afterwards i'm going to be fixing my sleeve i'm sure once i place it on my mannequin this would make so much sense okay but you can see that with just the pins alone we are having our peplum standing so make sure you pin your peplum in place before you finally go ahead and sew and you can see i also finish this edge here with a bias tape and it looks really neat can you see how neat it looks it looks really neat and on the outside this is what it looks like guys this is the outcome of the blouse can you see how nice it came out i've already gone ahead to knot the belt but let me loosen it so you can see it so you can attach a button here but i don't think there's any point since there's already a belt okay and let me turn it to the back this is the back this is the back i have like one two three pleats at the back so guys if you enjoyed this tutorial kindly give it a thumbs up if you have been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed to the channel please 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 do so and until my next video make sure you have a wonderful day wherever you are my name is ayomide and god bless you